Tapped in, and there's Sam Bell. Naismith slides in Cornick. That'll do it. And he make an impact right away. He'll try. So after a quick trip down the M5 southbound, the Bristol City squad have arrived at Home Park to take on Plymouth Argyle this Easter Bank Holiday Monday in the Skybet Championship. The lads will, of course, be looking to build on their home victory against Leicester City on Good Friday, where Anis Mametti's boot claimed all three points against the Foxes. So can Liam Manning's men do the double over Argyle in Devon as they visit Home Park in the league for the first time since March? 2010. We are about to find out. Hello, good afternoon. Welcome to Robins TV on this Easter Bank Holiday Monday. Thank you very much for joining us. It's also April Fool's Day, but it is now after midday, so there are no jokes on this show guaranteed. However, we do have City midfielder Taylor Gardner Hickman. Taylor, welcome to Robins TV, your first time here. Um, these are big games, aren't they? It's a West Country derby. All right, it might not be as, as big as the, the seven-side derby, but still quite tasty, isn't it? How are the preparations been this week? Yeah, no, they've, uh, they've been very good, you know. Um, lads are in great spirits, obviously, after the brilliant win on, on Friday. So, you know, yeah, like we, like we said, it is a, is a West Country derby, but, you know, it's just another game, and, and we try and take game by game, and especially going into the last seven now, um, we're just trying to focus on finishing as best as we can. Let's take a, a look back at, at Friday. The, the lads needed that win, didn't they? Yeah, 100%. For, for confidence is massive because I think sometimes we've not got the results that our performances deserve. Um, and I mean for the fans as well, you know, we, we've all been going through it all together, you know, um, not having good results recently. But, you know, that's something that, that really picked us up on Friday and hopefully we can continue today. And that kind of result, it just sort of leads to a bit of momentum and consistency is the key. And sometimes you just need to spring off that foot, don't you, to, to keep that momentum going? Yeah, 100%. You know, um, I thought we played really, really well against them, actually. I mean, um, considering, you know, that they're, they're, well, they were top of the championship when we played them. But, you know, it, it doesn't, doesn't matter who comes to Ashton Gate or if we go to their place. You know, we're always confident against any team and... Like I said, that, that result we needed and hopefully we can spur on. And back to today, what are Plymouth bringing to the table, do you think? What have we uh, got on our hands today? I think it would be a tough game, you know, especially away at their place, their, their fans and their ground, you know, it's quite a tough place to go. But I think the lads will be up for it, you know, Plymouth are a, are a good side in good form. Um, I mean, they've struggled of late, but, you know, they started really well in, in the league. Um, but yeah, I think the lads are, are well up for it today, so we'll see. Good stuff. All right, thank you very much, Taylor. Mm -hmm. For now, you're watching Robins TV. Of course, the all-important team news is what we're after, and we say uh, a very happy Easter Bank Holiday Monday afternoon to our lead commentator, Toby Osborne. Happy Easter, Downsy. Hello. Yes, not the seven alterations that Schumacher made for Plymouth's Ashton Gate visit earlier on this season, which of course backfired. Foster, though, has opted for three. The first change comes in a back three. Galloway is dropped down to the bench. Barley Mumba comes in to replace him. And it looks like a similar formation to the wing back formation City adopted on Good Friday. So the second change sees Miller on the bench in favour of Aston Villa, Loney, Lino, Souza. Uh, the final change is in the heart of midfield with Adam Randall replaced by Adam Forshaw. Goals haven't necessarily been Plymouth's problem so far this season. They'd be eighth in the league if it was based on that alone. Morgan Whitaker, of course, the second top scorer in the division. And Spurs' loney Alfie Devine are in the pocket behind Ryan Hardy. And then former Bristol City man Joe Edwards only managed four appearances for the Robins during his time here. He now has 216 games under his belt for the Pilgrims. He is on the bench. And your Bristol City side are unchanged following victory over Leicester City 
both in the starting eleven and on the bench as well. A different proposition today in Plymouth, but you'd ima- imagine the manager will stick again with that back five of Tanner, Viner, Dickey, Roberts and Pring. Deeper role again for uh, Knight, nearer to the captain today, Matty James, a position that seems to favour the Irishman. And beyond him, the scorer of that rocket on Friday, Anis Mametti, alongside Scott Twine. Tommy Conway leads the line again and will be hoping to make it double figures in all competitions at home park for the season. Knight LaBelle keeps his spot on the bench again. Not many minutes, but invaluable experience nonetheless. Nonetheless, lots of experience alongside him, though, of course, with Harry Cornick, Andy King and Naki Wells among the substitutes. Right, let's hear from the manager today, Liam Manning with Robins TV. Liam, the same team that won on Friday. Is it the same message ahead of kickoff? Uh, so, certain similarities, I think, you know, in terms of the behaviours, the, you know, the willingness to run like we did on Friday is going to be key again. Uh, and then, you know, around that, I think, you know, obviously there'll be certain... Uh, changes and adaptations to the plan. Obviously, playing against a diff- you know different opposition, a different style. So there'll be a, a large number of similarities, but also a couple of tweaks as well. Different opposition and a different style, like you say. What do you make of them? Yeah, tough game. Tough game. You know, you look at it. They obviously you know first season back up to championship in a little while, and you know they've, where they're at and how they've transitioned. You know, they've done a really good job of it. Uh, so uh, you know, I think it's one of those. We, we know every single game in this division so fine, so tight. So we have to be at our best. Heavens look like they're about to open here at Home Park. How much can the conditions affect a game? Yeah, they can. I think you know, ultimately they're the same for both sides. But you know, when we talk about adapting to you know whether it be a slippy, quick surface or uh, you know some wind, whatever it might be, yeah, you can't change that. It's about you know staying focused on what the game demands and delivering. Just five metres away from us is a packed out away and full of City fans come three o'clock. How big a part can they play today? Yeah, the following on the road's been tremendous, you know, and the fact it's sold out is excellent. So, yeah, like Friday, like we did Friday, hopefully we can give them something to get behind early. And, you know, like I said, we, we've all got the same goal. Let's work as hard as we can to achieve it. There you go, uh, Liam Manning chatting to Ryan Morgan from Robins TV there. So no changes uh, tells pretty big compliment to those players that are on the team sheet then. Yeah, of course, you know, they, they deserve to keep their spot. Um, they played tremendous on Friday and every one of them deserves to keep it. So hopefully that gives them all confidence. And, you know, they've all got that one game of playing together now because um, they wouldn't have played together as a, as a whole team before. So, you know, let's, uh, let's hope we can get the win today. There was some chat about whether um, Sykes he might come in for Twine straight away, but nice to see um, that bench is just as strong as ever too, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, that, that definitely helps, you know, having a strong bench in a championship because, you know, it's so physically demanding and you can change nearly, nearly half your team now with the five substitute rules. So, you know, mm. every one of them to come off the bench, whoever, whoever the gaffer picks will, will be um, up for it, I'm sure. Uh, just looking at the warm-ups here. Um, what, what's going through your head as a player now at this sort of stage of the game? You know, it's 20 minutes to kick off ish, and you know, you see the boys warming up down there. Obviously, we'd prefer you to be down there with them, <laughs> to be honest. Yeah, I wish I was there, but you know, uh, the thing that goes through my head is just, just complete focus, really. Um, I'm just trying to be a, as focused and, and ready for my job and think about stuff that's going to happen in the game and how I can impact it and affect it best. And then also about the team, you know making sure everyone's ready, we're all at it and getting everyone up for it, which none of the boys need, need you know, we're, we're always up for it. So Some, some you know, fantastic uh, moments from Friday to relive, including, you know, Anis Mometi and so pleased for him. It was really powerful strike as well, yeah. wasn't it, to that, for that goal? Yeah, no, I was delighted for him. He, he's been working so hard on that in training, after training as well. He's been putting the extra work in. And he's got that quality, you know. We, we mm. all know the quality that he that he holds, and it's on him to show that. And I think he definitely did that in recent performances, and especially on Friday. And and fortunately, he's, he's got his goal. So hopefully, he can get a few more. That's the one you've, you tend to find with strikers, don't you? That um, you know, maybe one, once one goes in, then there's a few more. We've seen this sort of time and time again at City, and it is, I guess, just a confidence thing. Yeah, I think that's the nail on the head. You know. If, if we could do it every week, we all would. It would be lovely. But, um, you know, yeah, like you said, confidence is massive in front of goal. Once you get that one, you see so many players get a, a little scrappy goal and then they'll go and get four or five in the next four or five games. So 
hopefully he can replicate that and, and yeah, I'm looking forward to watching him play. Well, he looks like he's uh, certainly in the mood for it down there with Stikesy and, uh, and Tanner. Right, let's um, talk a little bit about you. Obviously, uh, as we've mentioned, we would much prefer you to be out there. Um, how's the calf? How's recovery? When are we going to see you back? Yeah, calf's all good. Um, you know, n- nothing too major. So I'm hoping a couple of weeks from now, hopefully soon, I, I should be back and hopefully back stronger than ever. Um, you're a right-sided player. Um, do you have a sort of preference of the position you play? Because I know you're, you know, you're, you're multi-skilled in that <laughs> sort of department, aren't you? Yeah, I mean, I've always used to say growing up, you know, as as long as I'm playing, I'm not I'm not too bothered where I play. But um, I think this season, nailing down that that centre mid spot and playing a quite a lot of games in the in the number six role is is something that I've really benefited from and I really enjoy. Um, I feel like it gets the best out of my game. Um, I feel more involved in the game um, so yeah I'd probably say central whether it's deep central or attacking central I mm. think it's it's I, I guess that sweet spot where everything just becomes sort of you don't have to think about it you know you get to that stage where um, I don't know it's a bit like a, a you know sort of a cat with super senses <laughs> you don't really have to think about it and you find that in that position yeah definitely um, I find things come naturally and you know it helps definitely like I have the likes of Joe Williams, Matty James, Andy King, you know, experienced players and, and top, top players themselves. So that really helps me and gives me confidence to go and do what I can do on the pitch as well. Um, you, you mentioned Joe Williams there, he, he, an incredible guy, such a leader as well. It must be incredible to play alongside players like Joe. Yeah, 100%. Me and Joe have a good relationship on and off the pitch. Um, you know, he, he likes a good, strong tackle <laughs> and a, a scrap at times. and. I follow him and we always say, you know, we go into battle together um, and we're we're really confident whoever comes out on top of the, whenever we play against the other centre mids, then we'll, we're confident we'll get a result out of that game. Um, it was a big move because obviously you made your move to Bristol City Permanent in, in January. That must have been a pretty big decision because obviously, you know, West Brom is where you grew up. That's You came through the academy there. So it must have been a really important part of your life. Yeah, I mean... Uh, I think it was that time in my career to to kind of make the switch and you know I'm delighted that, it, that it's Bristol City and uh, I'm lo- loving my time here and I, I've loved my time here so far and I'm hoping for so many more better memories and, and fun memories to have but yeah like you said it 15 years at, at West Brom so you know I, I owe a lot to them in terms of where I'm at today but then it's always time to uh, start a new chapter so. It's a bit like leaving home, I guess. You've done your, you know, you're sort of growing up at a club and then it gets to the stage where you want to sort of leave home as such. How are you finding Bristol as a city in general? Oh, I love it. You know, the, I always say the people around Bristol as the city and the fans here and, and the people around the club, you know, I, I absolutely love everyone to pieces. It's like a proper, <laughs> proper family and I love that. So it's something that's really helped me settle in as quick as I have done. Which is really important, isn't it? Because actually, if things in your personal life are unsettled or you know whatever, that that can affect you in, in concentration. I guess so. It's nice that you're settled. Um, and what do you get up to in your in your spare time when you're not training and you're not playing? What do you get up to in your spare time? Uh, so, uh, to be honest, I I do love golf. Okay. Um, a few of us shock play- that a footballer <laughs> likes golf. Yeah, a few of us play down at uh, obviously down at the club, and obviously it helps that we've got a course right next to us, but. You know, I'm uh, not sure the missus will be too happy if I keep going every <laughs> week. So, uh, got to try and play when I can. But yeah, no golf mainly, and then just you know trying to recover. And the games come so thick and fast in this mm. league that you you need to recover and make sure you're right. So, you're also kind of doing your job when you're not doing your job if that makes sense it is isn't it it's, yeah. uh, you can't just sort of like hang your keys up at 5.30 and check out can you it's sort <laughs> no. of yeah. uh, a bit like that. who's better at golf than you who's worse at golf than you um, in the club oh, Naki Wiles is very good <laughs> uh, Harry, Harry Cornick is good there's a lot of us who play to be fair but mm. I'd like to say top top four top okay. three confident on my day could win yeah so <laughs> Yeah, you'll have to ask Naki because we always have a joke who's better over 100 yards than in. And I always say I am, he says he is. So. Got you. Well, there's a feature for Robin's TV. Yeah, I have to get that going. Love it. Taylor Vanell, thanks so much. Thank you.
Uh, you're watching Robins TV. Thanks so much for joining us on this bank holiday Easter Monday. Still to come, we give Harry Cornick a Robins TV grilling. We'll take a look at our opposition in detail. And of course, because it is a global game today, all of the action from Home Park. If you're watching on Robins TV, if you're watching on YouTube and Facebook, don't forget, you will need to buy your pass from the website to see all the action from the game. All still to come after this short ad break. family to protect and care for. We care for and nurture our own academy to develop them into first team players through opportunity. Our bravery, our fearlessness allows us to play with freedom. To entertain our fans and to inspire our community. We play to win, we exist to inspire. We always believe. You have to give me just a couple of seconds for the hairs on the back of my neck to die down after that season to get out of it. Whoa, gosh. Make sure you renew as soon as you can. Right, you're watching Robins TV. Thanks so much for joining us on Easter Monday. Hope you're having a good one. Not too many chocolate eggs flying around this afternoon. My dog ate mine. Brilliant. He's fine, don't worry. Uh, right, it's time to delve in and have a, another insightful look into the brain of a Bristol City player now. And this time we're putting Harry Cornick under the Robins TV spotlight. Let's take a look. Uh, Harry Cornick, forward. Uh, dogs. I'd ask him maybe like a, a sporting event that's happened, put some money on it, win a bit of money. Cheat the system. I've got one before a game I go to the edge of the box and do a few things with my hands uh, just to like remind myself games going on now, sort of get myself focused and sort of that sort of thing. Um, a room five, she will be loved. Beauty queen of only 18, she. 
Um, Perfect Sunday. I'd say like a Marvel series. Uh, watch, uh, watch a few of those films. Not a Sunday roast. I don't like Sunday dinners, so uh, I'd probably have like a lasagna, maybe, or that sort of thing for dinner. No, no Sunday roast, but yeah, maybe a movie marathon day. Ah, uh, Chinese. Uh, space, for sure. Good question. Um, maybe Eddie Howe. Eddie Howe, maybe. Um, I'd say Ian Habits would be Rob Atkinson. I think he had three lunches the other day, back to back. So, I'd say that's the worst habit I've seen. Um, I'd say the US Office. Every episode. Dwight Schrute. <laughs> You're disagreeing with this perfect Sunday because it didn't involve golf? No, I, <laughs> I think he might be telling a small, yeah. a small little lie there. You know, he, he loves golf, the boy, you know. Every time after training, I always see him in golf gear and I know he's off to the range straight away. So, <laughs> And um, for you, you'd, you'd rather see the bottom of the ocean or the, the space? I think bottom of the ocean for me. Mm. Um, I don't know, I'm just intrigued by it. I'd love to know what's down there because apparently only like something stupid like three percent of the ocean's been explored. Yeah, um, yeah, I definitely think there's other stuff down there, but who knows what? For sure, good. Righto, uh, thank you very much, Harry Cornick, for the for the tuneful song. Then, what's your karaoke song? Am I gonna have to sing it? No. Okay. Uh, oh, probably Coldplay. One of Coldplay's songs, but it's between two. All right, okay. Coldplay fan. Yeah, good cop. Yeah, big cop. Excellent. Coldplay. Well, a musical squad. We love it. Apparently, Marine Five is, all, is that your, it, Toby just behind the camera? Is that that's your go to karaoke? Is it? Yeah. Very good. All right. Well, if you know, if, if time allows during commentary today, maybe we can have some sort of duet. That'd be great. Um, let's take a look now at just some of the uh, uh, action that we might be facing this afternoon. Let's take a look uh, at more in depth at Plymouth. Um, and let's take a look at some of these clips. We'll take a look. Um, just well, uh, to, the way to describe this, probably uh, against Preston here, by the way, is that they're just not marking close enough. Um, Plymouth. No, definitely not. You can see how kind of standoff standoffish they are. Yeah. Um, and the common theme with them is that we've highlighted as well during the week is there always seems to be a man free on the uh, edge of the box. So you know, yeah. I know, I know we've been working on ourselves getting more players into the box and around the edge of the box so you know I think that's something we can really exploit today yeah absolutely you see this again this clip against Ipswich here um, so Kiefer Moore has all that space a real chance to exploit it you can see there look you know yards and yards of space um, so a chance for us to exploit those gaps today perhaps yeah 100% especially you know the players we've got out wide with Twiney and Anis um, definitely look to get into the byline be confident get their crosses in you know mm. um, and that goes for everyone over the pitch you know they've got to recognise those positions to get into which they've been working hard at all week and I'm sure I'm sure it will pay off and this is a prime example here of what you were talking about you know having players on the edge of the box Sheffield Wednesday here loads of space uh, on the edge of the box there um, this time uh, th you know they get away with it this time then lose possession again look exactly the same thing is happening where's the guy on the edge of the box here and this time they do get punished so that's definitely something that we can look out for today 100% Excellent. There you go. Um, more in-depth analysis as you watch Robin's TV uh, throughout this afternoon. Um, in terms of, uh, we, were we were talking about clubs that, um, you know, and atmospheres. It really seems to to me uh, that, that the city squad are very close. That you all get on with each other. There's no sort of you know, prima donnas as such. Do you do you feel that? Do you feel that that's the sort of way that we are? Yeah, hundred uh, percent. I've said it before. When I first come in, it's one of the first things I notice straight away. Um, and I think we are we are so close as a squad, and I think you, that that shows on the pitch as well. Um, I think we emulate that that tightness and togetherness as, as a group. We're all there to back one another up. Um, and yeah, it's like that day to day in training. You know, we all love looking forward to seeing each other coming in, having that banter. Um, but yeah, it's a re real good place to be. 
Good. Long may it continue. Taylor for now. Thank you very Thank much. You. Uh, right, you're watching Robin's TV. Time, time to say goodbye to our viewers on Facebook and YouTube now. However, this is a global broadcast, so if you would like to see all of the action from Home Park this afternoon, all you need to do is head to bcfc.co.uk to buy your Robin's TV pass and see the rest of the game. But for the rest of you, see you next time.